sorry I was looking the other way because it's easier for me to reverse I need to go back into low range again so we'll we'll just keep try and keep an eye on both of them and Seb what I want to do is I'll try and park us so that we can get a view of both of them We've got an obscured view of a leopard, but let's have a look. I think it's the Styx lions that are here. I can just see some little ones. I can't see any adults just yet. Oh, no, I can. I can see one adult. But we'll have a look. Those are two of the little ones. Hello, guys. It's been such a long time since we've seen you. Ooh. Now, Safari, you say that this is quite scary because the sticks are known to be leopard killers. I don't think that that's the specific trait that we can use to describe the sticks. All lions would be leopard killers, hyena killers, cheetah killers. They will take on anything. Remember, they compete directly for food. So it's normal that they don't like each other. So I don't think we should say that the sticks are particularly lion killers. I can actually hear a bit of commotion. Now... Don't know if it's maybe the little one suckling. I can hear some rows coming from the long grass. When Hosanna is just over there, we have another look at him. I reckon he's waiting for a gap. I don't think he wants to stay up in that tree for very long. He doesn't look very comfortable at all. You can just see him. We're right on the boundary, of course, as well. A bit of growling going on down here. Probably the adult lioness is growling at the cubs. He looks like he wants to make a run for it as, as soon as he can. Let's see if he does do that. Or are you just going to go up higher and find a comfortable branch? Or well, sign a settle in for the morning. <laughs> it's just amazing how quickly he would have gone up that tree too. And the lions won't be able to get him up there. I think if a lioness can climb that tree, I'd be super impressed. Because it's a very, very steep, straight base that I reckon maybe leopards only have the power to go up it's about or maybe about 10 or 12 meters vertical before or sort of straight up before the branches start forming lions are very good at climbing trees however not as good as leopards they go up fairly well especially if there are some low-lying branches but they can't get down the tree you might be able to hear the growling of the lions there's another lioness they're just in this thicket. We'll try and get a better view of them, but I also don't want to miss Osana perhaps making a run for it because it could be quite interesting to watch him dash down the tree. Have a little listen. Now, of course, as I say, that they all stop growling. Osana is keeping a very, very close eye on us, though. There's the little one again. I don't know how many lions are here, if it's all three of the Styx lionesses and their cubs. It could be, there could be only two of the adults together. I don't know if there's a male here either. We'll go in and we'll try and have a look, but for the moment it's quite nice, the spot we've got. We can see both of the animals. Lots of movement, you might hear lots and lots of different cars driving up and down desperately wanting to view the sighting but unfortunately it is difficult because they're just too far onto our property very just listening to see if there's anything else going on now, Michelle, you're wondering if the lions would definitely go after Hosanna. Yes, especially there's young cubs here. The lionesses would feel as though they need to protect their little ones. So if Hosanna does come down the tree, uh, if he came walking this way, they would chase him. I don't think they would be too bothered now, actually. They don't even seem to be glancing over in his direction. It's more Hosanna's keeping an eye out on his own tail. He, he wants to watch where those lions go. Because remember, if they do come and harass him at the bottom of a tree, he's going to feel even more panicked. You can see he actually keeps looking over in this direction. You can probably hear them as well as see them from that height. Now, Sally from Oregon, I did just answer this just a moment ago, but the question is from you, is he in a tall tree? 
that the lions could not get up. I don't know if the lions would be able to climb up of that. Like I said, it's a very, very long, straight base. If you have a look, look at that. It's about 12 meters up until the first branch, maybe even slightly more than that. Now, they might be able to, but would they risk something like that? I'm not so sure, especially with all these youngsters around. I think as long as Hosanna stays up high and off the ground, the lions know there's nothing to worry about. But there's, if there's three lionesses here, I don't think they'd be particularly worried about one leopard, especially a youngster. But Hosanna, yes, you better be careful. You better watch your tail this morning. I'm just trying to figure out where he's been eating, what he's been feeding on. I wonder if they did maybe steal something from him. Maybe he was feeding down on the ground. What do you think, Seb? Do you want to try and go in and see how many lions, or do you want to stick like this? Um, I'd like to go see if we can give it a look at the lions. Okay, let's um, try and navigate through here then. Oh. So you can go back slightly. Please don't break the car in the lion sighting. Please. They have eaten something. I think they've stolen. I'm sorry, lions. I know there's lots of sticks here. Haha. <laughs> what a play on words. There's lots of sticks here. <laughs> I was actually talking about all the branches, but then I realized how funny I was being unintentionally. Now, the lioness on the right, actually, she, I don't know if you can see her now, but when she turned towards us, she had blood on the side of her cheek. Uh, the, that one that's just walking at the back there. Now oh, she's going to sit in a spot. I reckon that Hosanna must have had a kill around here. I'm actually looking for any remains. And I think he lost his kill to these guys. I don't know what it could have been. It could have been anything from a Steenbok to a Dacot, maybe even an Impala. Maybe he was feeding on the ground. And... And then they've come through and obviously maybe they heard the commotion but it does look like Hosanna did have something to eat so at least he did he got something out of it he's got a round belly but I thought that's maybe what happened so those are definitely his tracks that we had in the Mulwati now just uh, slightly east of the Twin Dams watering hole we were doing we we're going round and round and round searching hoping that we were going to bump into him I did have a feeling that he was here somewhere so that's good to know we finally got them. And it looks like all three lionesses are here. Cub-wise, I can't tell you how many there are. I've seen three so far. But the grass is so long. And they all seem to be, the others seem to be laying flat and suckling off one of the females. But you can't see it, unfortunately. So I, I'm not going to be able to confirm how many li uh, cubs are here until they move back out into the open. So that lioness keeps scanning over every now and then. You see her open her eyes. So I think she's watching Hosanna. We actually have a view from here, Seb. That's actually quite cool. Look, Hosanna's making a mo move. He's moving out into another branch, which is quite kind of him. So we keep, thankfully, we keep positioning us, getting ourselves into great positions this morning in terms of trying to see all the cats and if you are seeing that power line as we're on the boundary road the boundary roads have all got the the electricity poles so that's just what that is yeah he's not happy i don't blame him though i'd also be very stressed you just had your meal stolen from lines you can imagine it's the equivalent of a having a home invasion i suppose or imagine somebody coming in and taking your dinner plates away from you <laughs> and chasing you up a tree it can't be a very pleasant experience but he'll settle down and this is of course just nature the more encounters he has like this hopefully he's learning and he's remembering and how to get away you know what to do what not to do but again the wind could have worked against him because can you imagine if the lions were just stalking him which they do do i've watched lions stalk many other cats before one of the craziest sightings i had was with the mandler from the southern pride and the serval i told that story quite a few times so we uh, we do see it now again we're talking about the wind muffling sound it could have actually gone completely pear-shaped for Hosanna this morning but luckily luckily he uh, um, he managed to of course get away for now Just tr trying to see what he's doing Hosanna has stayed he's moved back to his original position they're all 
all licking themselves, all grooming themselves. I'm just trying to see, because we haven't seen the sticks lines for a very long time now. They're still looking good. I also don't know how many cubs they have these days. The last time I saw them, I think there were about six of them. But again, that was many months ago, and what feels like maybe maybe two or three months ago, and we know that unfortunately the cats don't always have the greatest success rate when it comes to raising offspring. And I also heard something about wild dogs in the West, if I wasn't mistaken on the radio, so I'm sure Tristan's ears would be pinging when he heard the word wild dog. And hopefully he'll go and investigate. It'd be nice if they came across. It sounds like they're maybe in, between Arethusa and Simbambili, somewhere around there. But wouldn't that be great if we went from having such a quiet game drive to all of a sudden finding all these wonderful animals. But unfortunately, the only thing that I have to say is prepare yourselves. We're not going to be able to stay here all morning. Fortunately, you can imagine a sighting like this when you've got two of the big five, and it's the two cat species of the big five in one sighting. People will come from every corner of the Sabi Sands to come and see something like this. It isn't a very common sight. These encounters happen. I think these encounters happen more often than we think, but to actually be at the right place at the right time and catch it, is the difficult part but it's very limited view as well of these lions i think i'm going to trade places i don't think andrew's going to be able to get in here behind me maybe if he goes this way we'll just see but yeah i think he's going to hug that termite mound okay so we'll just sit here for a little bit the only thing i have noticed with the sticks lions sometimes they, the, the cubs are a little bit jumpy of the cars i noticed one cub actually got up and moved when we came in that's why i stopped where we were Not all the cat's are as relaxed as, well, some of them. Oh, there's another head that's just popped up over there. You can just see that looks like one of the little ones, the little lions. Um, not that one to the right? Oh, yeah. yeah. That was one of them that was suckling. Like I said, you can just sort of make our shapes and figures through the long golden grass. So they're there, but we can't get in there, unfortunately. There's just too many trees and things around. Now, Exquisite Bliss, you're wondering if li leopards ever go after lion cubs. Oh yes, most certainly. So that's what I was saying, is that even though a lion is potentially more of a threat to a leopard than a leopard is to a lion, to lion cubs, they could be one of their biggest predators. Even baboons will kill lion cubs, leopard cubs, hyenas, and no problem. They'll take them all out. So you have to be very careful. And you can't blame, of course, the lionesses for being on the protective side. They also need to protect their gene pool. licking its feet. Maybe it's got a little thorn or a burr or something stuck in between the pads of their feet. They were so fluffy at this age too. Actually the sticks lions always tend to be quite fluffy but they look good. From what I can see the obscured visuals that we're getting of them they seem to be healthy. They're looking in a lot better condition than the Nguhuma pride right, I can tell you. Perhaps they've hit the jackpot with finding and catching animals. There seems to be quite a few zebra um, around the Annette's areas and that's where they and little Gari all those spots that's where they've been hanging around quite a bit so it's nice to see them here this is typically the Nguhuma territory so sticks you better be careful you like count yourselves lucky that the Nguhumas are not around because it's a much bigger pride be quite interesting to see what happens because the Birmingham boys don't discriminate between the Nguhuma pride the sticks pride and the Torchwood pride they visit all of those but I, it would be interesting to see what would happen when you'd have the Nguhuma Pride bumping into the Styx Pride and say each of them had a Birmingham on their side. I wonder what would happen. There would definitely be some conflict between the girls, but with the boys, surely not. Quite interesting to see something like that, don't you think? I don't, I've never seen an encounter like that, so I wouldn't even know where to begin to try and describe a situation like that. We will put that, we'll put that in the book and hopefully one day I'll have a sighting like that and then I can be able to comment on it accurately. I can't imagine it would be a very, very pleasant sighting, but which side would the boys take? <laughs> I think if anything, the sticks lines, if it was at the Cubs, well, if it was like right now in the next couple of days or so, if we had an encounter like that, I think they might actually run because the younger Cubs aren't as big as the, the Nkuhuma sub-adults and they'd be able to move a lot quicker. I think they would try and actually get away and retreat, if anything. But 
like what a great way and what a great start to the morning it took a bit of while it took some time we actually seem to not be having too many big cat sightings in the first hour of drive it's normally coming into the second hour that everything starts to get a little bit better and we start seeing some more no they look quite comfortable here the little cubs all seem to be settling and as well especially if they did if they had a little bite to eat you know they had breakfast now they can race for the day so maybe we're going to have a, a lion established lion sighting first thing this afternoon if they don't get moving but the rest of them have gone completely flat now barring one lioness and two cubs that are still grooming themselves the rest of them not even twitching an ear this morning that's cool though. Let's go around again because I know maybe the other car wants to just maybe swap with us. Let's go and have a look at Osana. Our view of these lions unfortunately is very restricted. Let's try to go back slowly through here, not in this tree. Oh my goodness. I Lots of cars this morning they cannot be pressured because you can only have a certain amount of vehicles on our property and these guys don't have traverse rights five minutes and then we're gonna have to move on unfortunately and give everyone else a turn and then if the sighting quietens down a little bit later then we will come back here but there he is he's watching very very carefully as to what's going on out here. Alice, are you still there? You've been very quiet. He looks big though. Now remember, yesterday, actually last night on Twitter, I was talking about how we often forget how big animals look when they've got full bellies. And I couldn't believe yesterday with that sighting of Tinyo, how he looks like a completely different lion when he's on the slender side of things. And the same thing goes for Hosan. Now that he's got a big belly. It's almost like he's filled out even more. He's looking fantastic. <laughs> now, Deborah, you've said it looks like Hosanna has tripled in size since you last saw him three months ago. Well, if that was the last sighting you had of him, then most certainly he definitely has grown. I think he had a very early growth spurt, though, because he grew super quickly, and it seems as though Tumba's doing a very similar thing. I mean, I think Tumba's almost the same size as, as Hosanna, maybe in, in terms of height, the same size, but not in width, and he's still got to fill out quite a bit. But Tumba's almost half the age of this fella, and his feet are massive. So I think he is another leopard we've got uh, to look out for. And hopefully he's going to get, you know, even larger. I'd like to see him with a very, very full belly. Now you might hear some other voices. Like I said, there's lots of vehicles around and in the sighting. But Hosanna, I'm glad that at least you had some of your meal. And I'm sorry if the lions did take it from you. So he is panting quite a bit. Not, it might not be now because he was obviously frightened and the adrenaline was pumping through his body, but it's also because he has got that big belly. Look at it. Looks like he's swallowed an entire beach ball. I always describe it as that. So he must have had a good meal. Maybe it was something like an impala. He definitely wasn't here yesterday, though. Because we searched these areas from top to bottom and three times over. Oh, hello, beautiful boy. Yes, don't worry. The lions won't bother you now. I, don't, I think they've completely forgotten about him. I think they came in, took what they wanted, chased him up a tree. And now they're like, well, we're just going to sleep. So you'll probably find if the Styx lions stay there, like I said, they look like they were settling in doing a last groom. Not because they're waking up, but because they are going to have a siesta. Is that eventually, once he feels brave enough, he'll probably go down that tree and disappear. I would imagine he'd go back onto, onto Gari Main and then maybe slink through little Gari and he'll need to have a drink of water after that big meal. Baboon pan has now dried up, so he might go towards Twin Dam. So he could also still be around, maybe in the Mulwati, somewhere around here for this afternoon. Wouldn't that be fantastic if that's how we could start our drive for the Sunset Safari? That's a beautiful shot there. Very nice framing, Seb. 
He's got lovely eyes. So him and Shongile have got the most gorgeous golden eyes. I think that's one of the two things that you can see how they're related. And then you've got Tumba, who's our blue-eyed, blue-green-eyed boy. Look at those feet. Yeah, they're not small. He looks, he doesn't look too comfortable. Yeah, I don't know how many sightings he's encountered. Or oh, sorry, how many sightings he's had with lions. <laughs> you can see that. Very worried indeed. Very, very, very worried. Now, I'm also just going to... I'm going to get a gap on the radio. I'm going to find out what's going on and how many people are coming into the sighting. Like I said, unfortunately, as much as I'd like to sit here forever, we have to be courteous, we have to be polite. I just barged my way through because we did have tracks of smell leopard. So I said, I was tracking him. I'm right here. I'm coming into the sighting. I just want to tell orbs that they, when they come past, they don't have to worry about us because we're looking up into the sky. Where's he going to go now? He can't quite get himself comfortable. I think maybe he's also just trying to rearrange himself to see what those lions are doing. Mosano, if only you could understand English, don't worry, they are sleeping. They are no longer interested in you. He'll be fine. Lovely teeth though, don't you think? He's really looking in fantastic condition and it's so nice to keep seeing the lions and the leopards and particularly the, the royal cubs. Not that they're cubs anymore. Good to see them doing so well. see what he's going to do now if he's going to come down he wants to move he definitely wants to go he's not happy <laughs> he's not happy up there I just want to find out from Aubrey quickly hey William how are you William I'm good hi guys we'll see you later yes. <laughs> cheers guys my friends are driving past us. You may have heard their voices. Actually, yes, can you believe that? I have friends. <laughs> Which is nice to see them, of course. When you're stuck out in the wilderness, I can't tell you how nice it is to see familiar faces, other than, of course, our family at work. It's nice to uh, socialize with, with um, other people other than just bush people. Hey, Sebastian. <laughs> we hear normal stories. We get to have adult conversations and all these types of things. It's quite nice. Now, as soon as there's a gap, let me quickly find out. How many vehicles are on standby for the sighting? Okay, copy, yeah, no, no problem. As soon as you, you get here, I'll pull out for you. Uh, just let me know when you want or two roads out. Cool. So tack, we're just gonna we'll make a space for Taxon when he comes through as well. He is on his way here. Um, he should be maybe another five minutes or so. So we've still got a little bit of time to spend with him. And then normally what happens is that the vehicles will come through. They'll watch, watch, watch and then they'll go for a tea and coffee break or someone will need to use the luxury facilities and then they'll have to leave the sighting and then that's when we can be like a vulture and swoop on in and try and jump back in actually you know what we must maybe do is maybe we'll give Tristan a chance I think Tristan would really like to enjoy the sighting and seeing as though between the two of us we haven't re re really having the greatest of luck with quality sightings and being able to spend sightings I'd like to reward Tristan so as soon as I leave the sighting and Taxon comes on in yeah, I'm just telling Andrew, sorry, Andrew, you can come where up here so you can park anywhere, it's no problem. See, luckily for us what's really nice is we've got the camera that's positioned so high up, so we're able to zoom up and over the tops of the head. So I just said to Andrew, he's welcome to pull right in front of us and, and get the view that he needs to get for his guests. We can always take a little bit of a step back because we've got a zoom, which is what's so nice um, in the sightings. And I think a lot of the guides actually appreciate that, that we don't necessarily take the best positions for photography because we can work around obstacles like long grass and branches and we can sit a little bit further away. 
Tristan, you're all the way up in the north. 150 kilometers away, are you? <laughs> Tristan says he's not going to be coming down here. Oh well. Well, we'll see if we do get another gap. Um, a little bit later than perhaps we will come back. I thought it, he might enjoy something like this. It's very pretty. It's so peaceful. The wind is starting to die down now too. Right, we're going to only be able to stay here for a few more minutes longer. Let's go across to Tristan. It seems as though he's found himself some other kind of spots.